Movements. They are based on an ongoing series of decisions. To do the right thing at the right time, our brain has to be well prepared. The processes that take place in such situations are investigated by researchers around the physicist Alexander Geil at the German Primate Center and at the Bernstein Center for Computational Neuroscience in Göttingen. They study how we plan for aiming movements, particularly in situations where we have to decide between general rules. Wenn Sie als Fußballer auf ein gegnerisches Tor zulaufen, dann haben Sie grundsätzlich zwei Arten Möglichkeiten, sich zu entscheiden. Sie können entweder sagen, ich schieße auf den Torwart in der Hoffnung, dass er zur Seite springt, oder Sie schießen auf die leere Ecke. Das nennen wir eine regelbasierte Entscheidung. The two rules are shoot at the goalkeeper and do not shoot at the goalkeeper. So does the player first gauge these two options, decide on one and only then plan the movement? Or does he plan both possible movements and integrates this knowledge into the decision? Researchers simulate this situation in an experiment. Test subjects remember the position of a point, comparable to the goalkeeper's position. Depending on the color of a square, they either have to press at the same or at the opposite position. If no sign appears, the test subjects can decide freely. Such behavioral experiments help to better understand the operating principles of the brain and of its various areas. Was uns lange bekannt ist, ist, dass der prämotorische Cortex und der parietale Cortex an der Planung von Bewegungen beteiligt sind. Was wir vor dem Beginn der Studie nicht wussten, ist, ob diese Areale auch beteiligt sind, wenn wir Entscheidungen treffen. Insbesondere wenn wir Entscheidungen treffen, die auf abstrakten Regeln basieren. To understand the test subject's behavior on a cellular level, the scientists measure in macaque monkeys the activity of single nerve cells. The animals are introduced into the task step by step. They get used to the experimental setup for many months. During this training period, they learn to handle the monitor and to perform the task. Besides the PhD student Christian Klaus, neurobiologist Chubadeb Chakrabarti conducts some of the experiments. Using very fine electrodes, he measures the electrical activity of single nerve cells. We record from this region known as the parietal cortex. We are interested in this region because the neurons here are selectively activated when the monkey plans a movement in one particular direction and are silent when he plans a movement in other directions. If it's true that planning a movement is made during the decision process, then cells that prepare both movements should be simultaneously active. So you can see already in the memory phase there are two populations of neurons that are active because uh, it represents both the options that the monkey is planning for. During this memory and planning phase, the cellular activity of both options is equally strong. Only after the direction instruction has been shown does the cellular activity increase for the respective direction. For the researchers, this is a clear indication that both actions are planned at the same time, while the decision is reached afterwards. To better understand the processing steps in the brain, the Göttingen scientists closely cooperate with bioinformaticians at the Ruhr University Bochum, where Sebastian Schneegans is a PhD student in the Bernstein Group. Geil and Schneegans generate a multi-step model to simulate the processes in the brain. Inside the computer model, a group of virtual nerve cells must solve the same task as human and monkeys, choosing between different aims, even without clear instructions. The researchers adapt the model so that it matches natural learning and decision-making behavior. Then they analyze the virtual nerve cells' activity. Ähnlich wie im Gehirn des Affen findet die Entscheidungsfindung in mehreren Schritten statt. Erst die visuelle Wahrnehmung, dann die Verknüpfung der verschiedenen Reize mit möglichen Bewegungsplänen. Dabei können verschiedene Bewegungen gleichzeitig vorbereitet werden. Die endgültige Entscheidung kommt dann durch den direkten Wettstreit dieser Bewegungspläne zustande. Im Gegensatz zu anderen vergleichbaren Ansätzen ist unser Modell lernfähig. Das heißt, es passt ein Verhalten daran an, welche Reaktionen belohnt werden. The model does not only successfully recreate the measured data. In addition, predictions about the decision process also become possible. Now the behavior of the model has to be investigated in more detail. How is it influenced by prior experience? When does it make mistakes? By comparing it with the data from monkeys and humans, the researchers can draw conclusions as to which processes occur in the brain when decisions are being made. Unsere Ergebnisse zeigen ganz deutlich, dass das Treffen von Entscheidungen und das Planen einer Handlung zwei Vorgänge sind, die Hand in Hand miteinander gehen. 
Diese Erkenntnis ist von herausragender Bedeutung für die Entwicklung von modernen Neuroprothesen, die direkt durch das Gehirn gesteuert werden sollen. Darüber hinaus ergeben sich daraus aber auch fundamentale Fragen darüber, welche Bereiche des Gehirns sind überhaupt an der Entscheidungsfindung beteiligt. By combining theoretical and experimental approaches, scientists get closer to the answer of such very general questions and explain why we make the right decision at the critical moment.